Namaste, hello and welcome back to another video on Hamsa Vahini Vajra Astra. I'm Ohuna and today's video is going to be about two books which I want to talk about which I've been reading in May and one of them is for the Middle Grade March Book Club which is being run by um, Krista from Books and Jam, uh, Amanda from The Middle Shelf and Katie from Life Between Words. I'll leave a link to their Middle Grade March Book Club channel in the description box below and the relevant video for this particular book is in the overhead cards above. Uh, there is also another book which I did read for one of the readathons that I recently completed, which was Hikathon Reads. And this was um, this readathon was created and hosted by Macy from the Bright Side Girl. I'll leave a link to her announcement video for this readathon in the description box below and append the relevant um, announcement videos in the overhead cards above as well. So do please join me further in this video. <music> Now, the first book which I'm going to talk about is Everything Else in the Universe by Tracy Holzer. And uh, this was, of course, for the Middle Great March Book Club. And um, this book also fulfilled a couple of prompts uh, in my other readathon, which was Hikathon Reads. For example, it did earn the badge uh, Bug on the cover. Uh, the second batch was uh, Characters on a Journey and third was Treasure Hunt. So um, this book is a historical fiction and it is set during the US Vietnam War and it describes the plight of family members and what the families uh, experience as a collective um, and the after effects of the war. So whether they are war veterans or they are serving members, the plight of the families during the war is what uh, this book uh, talks about and this entire book is seen through the eyes of uh, growing children so we do have our main protagonist Lucy who has just recently shifted in with her um, paternal family or close to closer to her paternal family because her father who is a very um, well-known heart surgeon was just uh, completed uh, his uh, courses for his heart surgery etc and uh, specializations etc has uh, also been enlisted and recruited immediately to serve as a doctor in the Vietnam War and um, Lucy has to uh, shift in with her paternal family as well as uh, adjust with the um, a robust life which her paternal family lives because uh, they are all um, they all have very deep roots and they are uh, very well um, connected and um, uh, they are actually Italian so um, everything everybody is into everybody's lives and um, which is exactly opposite of uh, what her maternal uh, family is because from her mother's side her grandparents are very polished and um, they are very quiet and reserved and they're very cultured but then uh, uh, on the other hand uh, her Italian family is full of superstition they are very jovial they're very lively and they're very noisy as well and they're always together so um, Lucy has just shifted into this new neighborhood and she has to adjust with uh, her new school. Uh, she is not able to make many new friends and uh, although she does want to join a few groups which she has been looking forward to but uh, somehow she's more engrossed in her studies and adjusting with the new environment and also thinking about her father who is currently um, serving in the Vietnam War and is also writing her letters and in his letters he's sending her these rocks. Um, so Lucy and her father were always very interested in um, uh, scientific um, um, excursions as well as they loved collecting rocks they loved understanding about the geological uh, formation of rocks as well as uh, counting the stars and knowing more about the stars etc so uh, her father was her central pillar in her life and now that he's away Lucy is at a loss and she has to deal with everything herself and also look after her mother and she's also growing so she has to mature very soon and um, she befriends uh, one of her um, her neighborhood boys called Milo who is uh, a curious looking boy and uh, he is full of curiosity and he has a love for dragonflies uh, and he sketches dragonflies in his um, notebooks or sketchbooks and he also wants to start a dragonfly uh, garden which is very close to a creek which uh, happens to be on um, Lucy's property Lucy's new property which Lucy objects to but then um, while they are um, trying to negotiate uh, between um, 
uh, property as well as the um, habitat or uh, ecological habitat, building an ecological habitat for a dragonfly to build a new nest. Uh, they stumble upon a hidden treasure in the form of a World War II veteran's helmet, which has family photos as well as a purple heart. Now, both Milo's father as well as um, Lucy's father um, were uh, serving in the um, or are currently serving in the um, war so uh, both of them immediately decide that they have to return uh, this helmet along with its contents to the rightful family so that the family is united with the last remains of um, their lost one and this entire journey and uh, is taken over and uh, we find uh, what um, the, the families face and uh, when their loved one returns uh, even after they have lost a limb for example Lucy's father when he returns uh, he has already lost a limb and he has to undergo depression and Lucy tries to be the right hand of her father but then her father is undergoing an emotional stress and trauma which uh, and she has to give space to her father for that and she has to come to terms with that grow up on her own as well as um, uh, try and understand Milo who whose father is also in the military and uh, he has not yet returned so um, the sadness the grief the loss uh, the reunification as well as the discovery of the um, views of the veterans uh, or the past veterans as well as the currently serving members this is all is packed into this beautiful story over here this was a four star read for me and i've also read uh, left my goodreads review i'll leave a link to the goodreads review in my in the description box below so in case if you would like to know more about my thoughts on this book you can definitely cross check with it now the next book which I read was uh, The Gingerbread Witch by Alexandra Overy and uh, this was a midweight fantasy and um I absolutely love this book and it was a four star read for me. So this is a retelling of Hansel and Gretel with an intersection of um, Red Riding Hood which is seen um, in uh, sections, uh, I mean it's in interspersed everywhere inside the it, in the entire story and uh, also this is part, the part one of a duology so I'm yet to read the second part but um, our main character is Maud who happens to be a gingerbread creation of um, a witch called Agatha and uh, there are uh, she has companion uh, gingerbread creations with her as well like she has a hazelnut chocolate mousse squirrel called Nuss who has a who has a very uh, huge I mean the, the attitude of this squirrel is absolutely adorable and then there is also a vulture who is very knowledgeable uh, called Florian uh, and uh, this um, vulture uh, so uh, I mean assists um, Agatha in her journeys and knows a lot about the world and um, there is also this wolf pup called Grim who has only three legs who always stays with Maud and Maud knows basic spells so she's a witchling she knows basic spells she has a witch mark but then she does not uh, know advanced spells like um, Agatha does so she wants to learn more but then she is not taught much by Agatha for her own protection now one day um, Agatha suspects that um, there is an intruder nearby and she quietly uh, tells Maud or she sends Maud to uh, forage for fruits in the for in nearby forests and wood and um, Maud is not very happy going away into the forest uh, she wants to learn more from Agatha and um, this was a perfect opportunity so in her rage she tends to accidentally kick the uh, perimeter of the um, uh, cottage and that perimeter had this protection spell which made the cottage invisible to the outsiders now with the perimeter broken the cottage is visible to everyone and by the time Maud returns from her fruit foraging in the forest uh, she finds that um, she has actually endangered Agatha's life Agatha is now uh, pushed into the oven by two witch hunters who are standing in the middle of a kitchen called Hansel and Gretel and um, she has to somehow resurrect Agatha as soon as possible otherwise 
Maud is going to crumble along with her other gingerbread creations like, uh, I mean, other Agatha's gingerbread creations like um, Florian, who is the vulture, and uh, Nuss, who is the um, uh, squirrel, as well as um, the rest of the gingerbread creations of the house, along with the house itself. So um, Maud has to travel to the Shadelands, as well as to the Forbidden Forest, where the first witch's spell book has to be retrieved, and then it has to be brought. So this entire journey which Maud makes along with um, the witch hunters on her tail who are trying to hunt for witches and um, how she um, evades all the difficulties as well as all the creatures in the forbidden forest is what this book is all about and it is beautifully written I absolutely loved it it was a four star read for me and I have um, um, also left my review on Goodreads and I'll leave a link to my Goodreads review in the description box below should you be interested in checking that out as well so those are the two books which I read for Hikathon Reads as well as for the Middle Grade March Book Club. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know what you thought about them and if you would be interested in reading this book. Or in fact, if you would be interested in reading part two of um, The Gingerbread Witch with me uh, on this particular channel. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And with that, I'll be wrapping up this video. I'll see you soon in another video next week. So till then, take care, have a good reading week ahead and namaste. Thank you.